for the girl to start chop chop you know work work chop chop let's get to work baby hi you guys welcome back to my channel this is the girl Shelly Mamoni thank you guys so much for coming back okay if you're new to this channel go ahead and click the subscribe button turn on the notification bell let me know what you guys think about this video <laughs> If you guys read the description, you guys know what this video is going to be about. Um, this is my first story time video on my channel and I think this is a very important topic that I want to touch base on. One of my biggest regrets throughout my whole experience that I'm going to share with you guys is the fact that I did not pull out my camera and recorded that entire, entire process. I was I thought it was gonna be like uh get in get out or not so more getting up because I got this so early it was gonna be a little speedier process and you know I was gonna you know not make it happen and I didn't have to pull my camera out. and then I um, it was so hot and I had my camera in the car I, anyway you know I didn't I didn't record it at all so that was one of my biggest regret did record this entire event but I'm going to get into it. I'm going to share my experience with you guys. And I'm going to let you guys know um, ahead of time if you guys are about to go apply for a passport or in a rush to apply for a passport. Just know the process that you guys got to go through. And it's not going to be at no fault to you. It's, going, it's, it's, it's inhumane. The things or the way these people treat their Belizeans in a whole just to acquire this very important document. So, don't be afraid to comment in the comment section box below. What was your experience like and what you think and we can, you know, have a discussion and, you know, and keep it going and see how we could better the situation. Okay, so let's jump right into this video. So, the first thing I want to say is I am not going to call any names. I am just going to share my raw experience with you guys. So... There was I, I had a spontaneous trip that came up because that's what your girl do. She she like to travel and baby she gonna be always on the go. So there was a spontaneous trip that came up that I was like, let's go. I am ready. Passport is ready. Let's go. I was never one to look into my passport. I don't remember checking passport date to see when it's expired. Whoop to whoop whatever the case may be. So grab my Belizean passport and I took off. Um, when I got on the plane, there is always a declaration form for Belizean that's coming into the country or I think declaration form for everybody that is traveling into Belize. You fill out this declaration form, you put all your passport information on this form and you give it to the immigration officer when you get into the airport. So I proceed to fill out my declaration form. I'm putting in all my information. And when I get to my information where it says passport information, I put in my passport number. And then I went to go ahead and put in um, my, expir my when it was issued, where it was issued, uh, my expiration date. So as I was putting in my expiration date, I realized, oh my God, my passport is expired. I'm like, are you serious? Anyway, I know it wasn't no big deal because, you know, a girl got her return ticket. So I did it 10 years ago when I went to renew my passport in Belize. Once you have a return ticket at that time, you needed a return ticket to receive your passport within the same day or within two days. So I was like, okay, I got my return ticket. I don't need to worry. I got this. I was only going to Belize for like five days. So, early Monday morning, I said to my friend, because this is Monday, and we're traveling back to the United States on Thursday. So, this is Monday, and we're traveling back to Houston on Thursday. So, early Monday morning, well, we had everything planned Sunday night. I told my friend, I said, we're going to get up early Monday morning, and we're going to go to Bamopan. It's where we're going to go get a passport, which is the capital of Belize, Bamopan. If you don't know, now you know. So, if you have anybody in Bamopan, have them get up and go wait in line for you get an early number. 
but you got to pay a little coins because people not just going to get up on their bed four or five o'clock in the morning you know hit them a little coins and then they will be like okay i'll do it for you we had a friend go wait in line for us while we leave from belize city to head down to bomopan so the friend got there about 5 30 that morning 5 30 5 30 a.m on monday morning got in line while we was on our way to Bumapan. We got to Bumapan about 6.30. When we got to Bumapan, there is a little office. Now remember, I am a person just getting into Belize, enjoying my little vacation, you know, not thinking about what all I need for this passport. So, there is an office right across the street from the immigration office in Bumapan where you're gonna do your passport. There's a little per white building I think it's passport express or some type of express don't know why exactly what is the name of it but it's a little building right across the street from the immigration office they'd be wearing purple shirt that says express something express on it you go in there and I think not that I think this is one of the best thing throughout the whole entire process that I think makes sense I, office was able to fill out my application for me took my pictures and signed had me sign it for a fee of thirty dollars thirty Belize dollars I thought that was amazing because they make sure your form and everything is correct so when you go inside the passport office or the immigration office you're good you don't have to be turned away to go get this and get oh you're missing something or you need to take it to a justice of peace sign. they made sure all that is correct before you go in there so i literally just went there with my expired passport and they filled out all the information for me make sure everything was correct took my pictures and i was good to go and um that was the best part of it so we got there about 6 30 they did all that at seven o'clock they open the gate for you to proceed inside and have a seat. So the same way you're going inside, in the same line that you form, you walk, you go in, and you take a seat. So you've been there from 5 o'clock, 5.30, standing in the line. Then you go inside a gate, and you sit outside in the sun. It's covered under a cover port, but you're outside in the sun. And you go in and you have a seat or in the heat you go in and you take a seat outside in the courtyard you have a seat you take your seat and then they you wait another hour and at eight o'clock they open up the window and then that's when you go to proceed to get a number now this is a part that floors me we were there or they were there from 5 30 waiting in line for us our number was 40 40 was the number that we had so we were number 40 so there was 39 people in front of me what time were the people there how long did these people have to be there to get who got number one i don't know i don't know if there was ever a number one because what it seems like because when i got there there was a guy that came up to me and said, hey, I could get you in early. And everybody's like, oh, don't listen to him. He's going to scam you. Don't listen to him. He's going to scam you. And I'm like, okay. It's okay. I'm good. So, what I think they're doing is people get the number. Or the workers get these numbers, the early numbers. And if you want an early number, you got to pay for it. And to get a number one, it was 250 Belize dollars to get number one. It was 250 Belize dollars to get number one. I'm sorry. That is ridiculous. So you go all the way. Because I'm like, they, can't, they, were, not, they were not 39 people in front of me. They were not 39 people in front of me. So how I was able to get number 40, it was ridiculous. Because there was never 39 people in front of me. There was not 39 people in front of me. So these workers get these numbers or grab certain numbers and will sell it to people outside who are in desperate need of getting in there early and get out. 
because the process takes all day for what I don't know. I'm gonna break that down to you guys and let you guys know. There is no way that passport application is supposed to take that long. There is no way. No way. For the process of what you gotta do, there is no way it should take you all day just to put an application in and pay for it and get out. No way. It's ridiculous and it's inhumane the way these people treat Belizeans just to get a passport. So I was sitting there and I'm like, me and my friend was sitting there, I'm like, damn, they're just at number 10. It's already going on 12 o'clock and they're just at number 10. It's so hot outside. It's like 110 degrees here. It's like a, some heat wave going on. It's super hot outside. So you have to stay hydrated. So... I'm sitting there and looking at like, oh my God, I'm at number 40 and it's already going on 12 o'clock and going on 11 o'clock, not 12. It's like going on 11 o'clock and it's already, um, I'm number 40. And remember now, I'm heading down to Hopkins to spend two days. So I was supposed to be there Monday, Tuesday, come back up Wednesday for us to leave Thursday. So I'm already losing my whole Monday. Now I'm going to have one more day left. Like, I'm already losing my whole Monday. So I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what else to do. Like, I'm getting, like, frustrated because we're outside in the heat. It's hot. And we're sitting, people are sitting outside in the heat. There's a cover port over your head, but it's there is no air condition. It's just hot. I can understand if we were waiting inside a building where it's air conditioned, it would have been fine. But you're sitting outside in the heat, and it's hot in Belize. It's hot. This is summertime. And you're sitting outside in this heat. From them, they have 8 o'clock in the morning. We're already standing in line since 5.30. Going now, it's 8 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock. All this time, you're just sitting outside. So, my friend knows, you know, a couple people and stuff. So, she's like, let me make a call and see, you know, what we could do. And there was this person. I'm not calling any names. You know, I'm not putting any names or anything. You know, it is what it is. But it's just... It's just, it's just a process and this is how things are working in Belize. We make a call and it was like, hey, you know, you could get a, a very close number. Like, you could go in right now, but it's going to cost you $250. I'm like, no, I'm not paying that. I'm, I, don't, I don't have that. That is ridiculous. And it was like, wait, you could get number 17 for $50. I'm like, I'll do that. I paid $50 and I got a number 17. Really? Really? I was grateful, but I mean, come on, what is going on with the system? Is that how these things are working now? It's like, who is in charge? Like, who is in charge? Where are these people that are in charge of this office and what are they doing? Are they the one hustling this money? Because you gotta know something is going on. Like, come on. So, that's just the start of it. So, I paid the $50, I got my number 17, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. You know, it's getting ready to like go on 12.30. Boom, my number came up, I went inside. I see people looking, and it's so unfair because it was people there that was I was I, that was ahead of me, and I'm now I'm jumping. But hey, it, 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 you gotta do what you gotta do. It seems like it, it's because that's the only way you're gonna make it. Like, that's the only way you're gonna able to, you know, to be, not even beat the system, but it's like to to get it done. That's what you got to do, and it's not fair. It wasn't fair that I had to jump these people that was in front of me. I know it's not fair. I know it was not fair. Everybody else is doing it, and I'm doing it too. It's not fair. I'm just saying the system is not fair, and why people like me are able to do that is because these people behind the office are not paying attention to implementing these process. So things like that doesn't happen. Because how you able to do that is ridiculous. And I'm just saying is because I was able to do it. That's why I could sit and talk about it. Because it's not fair. It's not fair. There's a lot of people that don't have the money to pay to even get a closer number. So they have to wait their turn. But I paid my $50 and I got a number 17. And number 17 got me in there and I still waited three hours. Let me tell you how this process work. You go in, and once you get in, you go sit at a window, and you give the clerk the um, your form, with your pictures and everything, you give them that form, and they take it. It takes that girl five 
minutes or less to put that information in the system. Once I was able to put that information in the system, she proceed, She got up, and there's a girl that sits behind all of them inside the office, behind the glass. She wears her glasses. I wish I knew her name. I wish I knew her name. If anybody knew her name, just comment it down below. Like, if you know her name, just drop it in the comment section. I mean, hey, they're public officers. Um, she was mean as hell. Ooh, she was mean as hell. I mean, girl, you have all this mean in you and you're not even doing your job. You're looking at the wrong people. Like, come on, you guys are looking at the wrong people. So why I'm saying that is because the girl got up and gave her the, my, my form with my number. Now remember, my number is not my official number. My official number is 40 with my name on it. Number 17 have a different number name on it. So whoever received that number 17, when they just to sell, uh, just to sell it, they just pick it to sell it. They don't want it. They just want to sell it. They num their name is on that number 17. So she was like, the lady with the glasses in the back, she's like, um, where you get this number from? I said, ma'am, my cousin was standing in line at 530 this morning to get it. Yeah, I said that. She said, well, um. They're not supposed to. I said, well, I didn't know that, ma'am. I didn't know that. I was coming down from Belize City, and I told them to go stand in line, and I guess they gave their name. I was driving, and I, I had them waiting in line for me, and they gave them their name. I didn't know that I was supposed to have them use my name, but I'll know for next time, 10 years from now. I showed it, said that to her. And then she proceeded, you know, have my application move forward. And... The girl gave me back my application and she told me to go pay for my passport. Remember now, there are like four people taking these applications that only takes five minutes to complete. All it takes is putting your name in the system, your name in the system, have this lady in the back signed it, and that's it. Boom, you're done. There's four people doing that. And then you go to pay for your passport. You will think, okay, I'm just paying. It's just to get up, go pay, and good. No. To pay for the passport takes an hour or so just to pay for your passport. Now, this is what I don't understand. If they are seeing that this is, it's clearly a problem. Everybody speaks about it. Everybody tells you how difficult it is to get in there and get out to get a passport. No, they're only allowing seven, 100 people to get passport per day. They're only going to accept 100 application. I mean, come on. It takes you literally, literally five minutes to put my information in the computer. But it takes an hour to pay. Because first of all, we're still writing out receipts. So the receipt is handwritten out for you. And stamped with a stamp okay we still stuck in that era it's fine no problem it's Belize we good but what I'm saying is if you have this many people standing in line paying for a passport why wouldn't you add another cashier why have one cashier for all these people to pay for a passport and these passport these receipts are handwritten why is that like common sense is like Passport is the thing that people are applying for every day, daily. People are going in there. Why have one cashier? I mean, why? But have four people accepting these applications. So we wait in line for these for, to pay. When you get there, you pay. They handwritten out your stuff. They ask you want it one day, two days, whatever. So the process of getting it in one day is two hundred and fifty dollars to get it in one day. To get it in two days is $150. I wasn't coming. I didn't need it that same day. I was getting. I was going to pick it up Wednesday coming back up going to Belize City. So I opted to get it in two days. So I paid the $150 Belize. After you pay for your passport, you wait an hour and so for pay for your passport, they have you go into another line. And the, you, your application is already in. Okay, 
So this seems to be the most important part of the process, which is when you go into this room, after you pay for your passport, you go into another room, but before you gotta stand in line for another two hours. You stand in line for two hours, and then you go inside an office, a room, where they take your picture and put your information in the system. Again, I don't know what the first process was for. I don't know. Why the first process couldn't put my system information in the system and have me pay right there at the window? I don't know. I don't understand the system or how they created it and why they think it's working because it's clearly not working because people are being punished just to apply for a passport. It's punishment. Just to apply for a passport. And this one of the main important things that recognized was a Belizean. And it's punishment to get it. We got already punished to go to the end for a visa. Oh my God. We got to punish to get a passport. Everybody ripping hell. So, you standing in line now to go into this room. In this room, this is what the process they do in the room. They put your information in the computer again. They put you on a wall. Take your picture. Have you signed? You're done. How long can that be? How long can that take? You know why it takes long? Because we got... Jane, Harry, and Susan, who knows Peter and Tom inside the office, that I jump in the line. So I'm looking at five people behind me. I got to the window, to the room. These five people are inside the office getting their pictures done and filling out their form. It's the system. I paid to get on number 17. It's the system and it's the way these people are running the system that are makes it so difficult for you to get a passport. It is not the process. It's the people that works inside these office. It's the people that are in charge because they sit behind the, in their desk and they do nothing. And I'm going to get to that as to why they do nothing. So, it was my turn. I got in there. I don't keep my mouth shut. When I see something, I say it and I speak on it. I don't keep my mouth shut. Anybody knows me, knows the top person. I'm going to speak on something when I see it's fairly unjust. So, when I get in there, for some reason, this lady, because I gave her a little attitude, the lady with the glasses behind the, the, the counter, the, fir the first portion of the application, that asked me about where I got the number from. For some reason, I gave her a little attitude, so she felt the need to try to come wherever I was, just trying to see if there was anything that was mistaken, where she could, like, read me on it. But it's wrong girl. Wrong girl. So, I went inside now to take my pink fingerprint and pictures, and here comes this lady coming into the office. She's just standing there. I'm like, okay, girl, you 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 feeding for something, but I'm gonna read you because it's the wrong person. I'm gonna read you, okay? Just give me a minute. I'm gonna read you all your rights in a few minutes. So she came in there and she just standing in there. So they take my pictures. They they have me sit there. I took my pictures. I took my fingerprint and they put in some information on the computer and they proceed to ask me to sign. There was a little table like this big that have two fingerprint machine on it. On, the, on this little table and right on that little table where they have the tool machine to do your fingerprint is where you're supposed to sign a girl hand is big right remember I'm not normal right as I was signing this form my signature whoops knocked one of the damn fingerprint machine off the damn table a whole ass in there standing looking Oh my God! Oh, I hope it does. I hope it works because that's the only one in the country. Um, I said, "Well, ma'am, let me tell you something. If you all know that was the only one in the country, you should have had that bitch in a lock and key. You all should have it stable. You all should have it velcroed to the stable. You all should have had it glued, locked, and everything else to this table." Better yet, how about you have a better table? The table is a little table like my day. My, somebody probably knocked up and put there. Honey, if this thing was so important and it's the only one in the country, why would you just got it? It's not even Velcro. You know, sometimes common sense tell you put a Velcro on the bottom on the table and stick it there so it doesn't move. Well, ah, oh, well, you're gonna have to. Who gonna have to pay for what? How about I take a picture and let's see where how this table looking and where you have it to let you know that you should have this better situated here so it don't fall off the table. 
or better you have me sign somewhere else and have me sign between these two important machines that you said is the only one in the country and then lose the risk of it falling off the table so I read her that right and she had nothing else to say and she left me the fuck alone she went out about her business walk out the office and everybody in line was going off like people were so frustrated they were so tired they were hungry it is oh my god it is crazy like me I don't know how people does their job but if I was in charge say for example I was in charge of the office if I'm saying the line is starting to back up because now people can't even wait inside and their air condition anymore because the lines are getting backed up I would proceed to have somebody okay let's see how we could get this line moving let's see maybe I get the application you do this or maybe I'm taking the pictures and then they have one person inside this room doing fingerprint and taking pictures and then until people start opening up their mouth they had somebody else went in there and start doing that process too so you got one people paying taking um the they have you have one people accepting the money for the application you have one person doing fingerprint taking pictures and putting the information in the computer but then they have four people taking your application and what they're doing with it and how they're doing i don't know what they do there i have no idea what was the whole purpose of that but in that moment they should have had you pay for that application right there right then she should have took that money take it to the cashier have the cashier write the receipt and bring it back to you why then excuse me why they have you get up and then go stand in line just to go pay for it was ridiculous it's like common sense and these people like some people sometimes i guess they're not working on that it's like what are you doing you're taking advantage of belizeans man these people in these office i don't know because they're not getting enough pay why they don't give a damn about their job but it's ridiculous and then you're having attitude for you having attitude for the wrong reason the wrong person because you should have had attitude with these people in these damn windows why they're giving out the numbers they're giving out. Because you should have known, I need to see a breakdown of all these numbers and where these numbers are coming from and where they're going. Let me see who got number one. How will start of that? Because these employees are taking number one and selling it to people outside. That's what they're doing. So you with the glasses behind that window, whatever your name is, you should be looking at your employees and finding out what's going on. And get their, them in check. And don't get mad at us because we're trying to pay for a number. We were... If, if your employees weren't making these uh, um, opportunities open, we would have never had it in the beginning to do. So don't come for me. You need to check your employees and make sure that they are not selling these goddamn numbers. Because people are out there. Clearly people have been out there from 3 o'clock that morning for them to get number 2, 3, 4, 5, however they got that number. People have appointments and were still waiting there longer than me. That's a whole nother different story. Um, anyway... When I finished my process, it was like 1.30 going to 2 o'clock, and I got number 17. Been there since 6.30 that morning. Just to put an application in. Each department I went to, there were three process. Remember, I'm breaking three the process down when you get there. You go to this window. You give them your form, your pictures, and everything that you take. They take that. She did something in the computer and took it to the girl behind her with the glasses. So it's, that's all I can explain. I don't know her name. And she looked at it and come for me with the number because she said, where you got the number from? I told her what I did. Which was a lie. Because of what you got to do to get ahead. And then I went on to pay for my application. That process took two minutes. Waiting in line took an hour and a half to pay. Get to the window. That took three minutes. Went in another line that took another two hours. Went into that office there to take my pictures and fingerprint. That took five minutes. So the process literally takes 20 minutes. But the waiting takes 10 fucking hours. Because these people drag their feet. You sit behind in the desk with lines long to the door and say you get out and trying to figure out what you need to do and make this process go faster so people will get home to their kids and go home and cook and get catch catch a bus and get out the heat. 
You sit inside your office in air conditioner. People are standing outside sweating in the heat. Okay. I was done. I got home. Relaxed. Couldn't believe what just happened. Wednesday. It's time for me to pick my passport up. So. I got up there about 12 o'clock. Got in line. The line was long. People was already there waiting. So, I'm that for person. I need to see what's going on. What's taking us so long? Okay, so now, I got there at 12 o'clock. Got in line. It's going on 1 o'clock. The line ain't moving. Nobody moving. So, I was like, let me see what's going on. So, I went up front. In front of the line. I look in the window, there was nobody behind the computer, nobody behind the desk. Now, the process to pick up your passport is standing outside in the sun. There is no shade, no cover port. You're standing outside in the bare sun. There were like 11 people in front of me. We all standing in the sun and there was like 25 people behind me. We all standing in the bare sun. So, I was like, man, why is it taking us so long? It's hot. Everybody's complaining. Oh, my God, we're just there to pick up a passport. All you do, pick it up. You give them your receipt. They look your name up, find your passport, sign for it, and you throw the dough. Like, why is the process so long again? <sighs> One third is coming. Nobody's at the window. I remember seeing the guy that was... I used to work for the government in Belize when I used to live in Belize. So I know what the system looks like. I know, you know, who is in charge, what they look like. So anyway, I look when I was waiting in the in the line to pay for my application, I see this guy sitting in this room by himself behind a desk. So I said, okay, he's in charge. That's the guy that is in charge. Okay. So now on Wednesday when I was waiting for my Pablo, I see that same guy coming outside the building. I'm like, uh oh, this is my opportunity. Let me chat with you and see what's going on because something is not right here. Something is not moving right. Something does not right. Something that seems right. So I stopped him. I said, hey, good afternoon. I said, can I speak to you for a minute? He's like, what's up? I said, um, we've been here since 12 o'clock. Everybody been in this line since 12 o'clock. The line have not moved. Ain't nobody's behind the window. Do you know what time they start working inside by the window to give you a passport he looked at his watch he said um should be one o'clock somebody should be in that one o'clock somebody should be in that one o'clock so apparently the girl that works in there was on her lunch break and her lunch break took another 30 more minutes because she's supposed to be back at lunch at 1 and start working at 1 o'clock. This was 1.30. Going on 1.40. And nobody was in there. So he walked back in there. He said, let me see what I could do. He walked back in there. 10 minutes later, here come the girl. Strolling in off her lunch break. This is at 1.45 at this time. Strolling in off her lunch break. Walked past us. Went inside the building. And went inside the room where they're going to now issue our passport through this window. No, we standing outside in this sun, in the sun all this time. Sweating. Baking. It's ridiculous. It's inhumane. That we have to endure all that to pick up a passport. It is ridiculous. Because he saw somebody went in there. He went inside and see that that girl was not back. He should have said, can somebody go in there and start issue a passport? Can I have somebody else go in there and start working that window? Because where is so-and-so? Where is Susan? Why is she not back yet? And why is she taking so long? John, can you go in that window and start issuing those passports for me? He did nothing. We waited another 50 more minutes to lug her. Walls her ass up in there and went inside her room. We looking at her. It's through a window. We all standing outside this window looking at her. Now here comes Suzanne. Inside this window. Off her late lunch break. We standing outside. In the sun. She don't business about us. That's us. 
Not knowing that all oh, taxpayer money is putting her in there. Maybe not mine no more. I don't pay tax and bleeds anymore. But I mean, come on. I pay for my passport. But um, we paying for her or or, or y'all, they, whoever, taxpayer bleeds in. Shit, all our taxpayers' money is paying her to be in there. To make sure we are comfortable, to make sure we're good, to make sure we get what we want. And it's ridiculous. Because then she got in there and then she started talking to John about her lunch, who she met on lunch, what she had for lunch, if it's settling in her stomach, if it's coming back up, everything she started talking about in there. And we stand there looking at her like, girl, are you freaking serious? There's this one guy was like, okay, time to work, time to work. The guy's outside standing was like, okay, it's time to work. That girl did not budge. I wish I knew her name because I was sure I had called it. I wish I had my camera because I would have recorded her. That was one of my biggest regrets of not recording that whole thing. I'm we standing there looking at her. She takes the first lady paper from her. She asked her for a paper and I guess she felt like by her taking that, it makes us feel like she's now doing her job. She put that paper there and then not even look at it and start talking to John. No, these are not real names. So don't tell me that. No, I hope no John works in there because I'm just hypothetically making up these names. Just talking to John about her lunch break, I guess. Or, or, or on or what she did the night before. Because she weren't working. Going on 2.30. This was not, we have been there 12 o'clock. It's now 2.30. Now she start working. They can't find a lady passport. The first person, they can't find her passport. I'm like, don't you guys have these things in alphabetical order? Like whoever makes the passport or whatever department prepared the passport. You would think common sense would let me automatically put this passport in alphabetical order before I take it to the clerk up in the front to issue this passport. Or the clerk should come back on lunch on time and take a 10-15 minutes to make sure her stuff is alphabetical order so it will be easier for her to just get people in get people out. I don't know how people don't know. Like, I don't know how people don't take pride in doing their job to do it right to make people are satisfied. Like, they treat these people that getting a passport like it's like a... Like you're begging for something. It's like, God, I don't even think these people in the damn in visa office treats you the way these people treats you to get a passport. Like, I don't understand. So anyway, they look and look, can't find a lady passport. They look and look, can't find a passport. Okay, they had her put to the side and wait. Anyway, she went with the second lady receipt. So she took the lady that was number two in line and um, she proceeded to look for her information. Once again, she went through five folders of passport just to find that lady passport. I mean, so nothing was in order. So we was going to be there another hour. There was like, it's, as I said, it was like 11 people in front of me. We was going to be there another hour. Literally. Because I'm now, I'm stepped out of my line and I'm standing in front of the window looking at this girl and see how she was working, how she was moving. And I'm like, this got to be the most ridiculous form of work or issuing all the passport. Like, it couldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. There is no way it should be that hard. People are standing in the bare sun. Sun beating on us waiting just to pick up a passport you sitting behind a glass window in your air condition doing nothing don't even try to figure out how to make a system works so it go faster the person in charge you see these people are standing outside waiting so long you say you go in there and ask her what is going on what is taking so long do you need help what you need help with like something nobody does nothing they figure out that they, everybody have to understand that's the process of getting a passport and that's what you got to go through what you got to endure to get a passport it shouldn't be that hard it should never be that hard and I don't know who is in charge or whoever is in charge because their boss need to get on their ass because dude there's no way you're supposed to sit behind a desk and have these people waiting that long because it's not the process that takes a long time it's your employees and how they're moving how they're working 
is what making this process take a long time. Because the process is so simple. Find my passport, let me sign for it, let me go on about my business. But you got to look for the passport. You got to look through all the passport to find peace. You got to look through all the passport to find Castillo. You got to look through all the passport to find Smith. I mean, come on. Alphabetical order. My last name is Peace. Go to P. Find a folder that have all the P's them in there and you find my password. It's simple. The person that the, at the office that makes the passport, you know this person's last name is Castillo. Put her file in, put her passport in the C file. Label it C. Put a big letter C on it. And if it's Castillo, put that person's file in, uh, passport in the file C. It is not that difficult. You guys make it difficult. Your system is what makes it difficult. The people are in charge of what makes it difficult. It's not the process. An application process for a password shouldn't take 10 hours. Then 5 hours just to pick it up. It's ridiculous. You all need to lose your damn job. They need to put new people in there. Stop hiring these people based on their damn political affiliations. Hire them based on their qualifications. Because then they get in there and they don't know to do shit. They don't even know to do the damn job. Because they don't take nothing seriously. They don't feel like they don't need the job. I don't know if they feel like, oh, well, I'm not getting paid enough, so I'm not going to do shit. That's what some people think. But still, the people them that are working hard and, you know, just want a passport. People travel far just to go get a passport. And you got to wait 10 hours. You got to go back and come back again to pick up the password. And still got to wait 5 hours more just to pick it up. I watched 3 people in front of me because they couldn't find their passport. Then finally, they see that it was getting too overwhelming. They put another guy in there to start helping her. It moves a little faster. But, I mean... This something needs to be done. And it's just my story time. It's just me, my it's just my experience telling you what I see and what I've experienced. I experienced it firsthand. I was there. And I told him, I'm glad I don't have to go through this process again in next till um, another 10 years from now. Hopefully the system is different. Hopefully it's all computerized. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. Because it is ridiculous. Like it is straight out inhumane, and I'm gonna keep using that word because I think it's inhumane. I think it's like a political abuse of the people. Yeah, I'm using. <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, it's the blurred, honest truth. Like it's the damn darn honest truth you guys are taking advantage of Belizean people and it's not something that don't tell me that's the process of going through an application to go to get a passport that's not the process the process doesn't take that long it was less than 30 minutes whatever I did in that office was 30 minutes between the three process Three windows that I was, it took 30 minutes within those three windows. The minutes I was at those windows, out of 30 minutes. But waited them the eight hours. Eight hours. Just to do a 30 minutes application process. I waited eight hours. At the pickup, I was there 12, 1, 2, 3. Like three and a half hours just to pick up the passport. And there was only 11 people in front of me in the line. Three hours. I don't understand. Everybody be like, you got to go get there early. You know, you got to do this. You got to go. Hold oh, the blue passport. Is this, is that. It's like people dread just going to apply for a passport. And it shouldn't be that bad. That's something you're entitled to as a Belizean. Everybody out there was had something to say was sharing the opinion and was just upset of how the process was working if you had somebody sitting down under an air condition I would understand it would be a lot different but to have them sitting outside in the heat 
then picking it up you're standing outside in the heat true outside in the bare sun you're standing just to pick up your passport it's ridiculous I hope you guys share this video share this video like share it so people could know I don't know who is in charge of the immigration system in Belize but if something needs to be done because there's no way your employees are able to sell these damn numbers trying to make a month trying to make money off of these Belizean people and there's no way people need to be standing outside in the sun that damn long just to pick up a passport and there's no way a 30 minutes application process you need to wait eight freaking hours it's ridiculous it shouldn't be that hard it should never be that hard it should never be that punishing Shit, we ain't that, you know, I'm nowhere third world country, but isn't, we're not that badly off. Come on. Put more people in the damn system. Shit, there was a lot of immigration officers that were just standing around inside the office. I don't know, if they're looking to, to, to snatch some people up and, and put them, you know, I, I don't know what they were doing in it, but they were just standing around in uniforms. Put them to work. What their purpose was just being in the office for? When you see a million people standing outside in the line and everybody just standing around behind the office looking and then the El Jefe, he's sitting in the back just sitting there looking. Yeah, you. You always need to get up and make sure employees are moving at the speed they should be moving and get these people home so they could go cook and catch a bus. Shit, you go stand outside in the damn sun and let's see how you feel. Let's see if you won't have an opinion about that. I was pissed off. I opened my mouth. I, I was saying what I wanted to say because it was ridiculous. I sure did. Anyway, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys for coming back and clicking on my video. This is my first story time. I have a couple more story times that I want to share with you guys. <laughs> Some of them going to be fun story times, you know, like things that have happened. So if you guys like story times, if you guys enjoy and want me to tell more stories of things that I, like, I have experienced, hit the like button, baby, and let's get this video to 200. Let's get this video to 2,000 views. Mm -hmm. Let's get this video to 2,000 views, and I will give you another story time. I will give you guys another story time. Ciao, ciao. Until next time, more time and in due time. Peace out.